Have you ever wondered how our brains process while we read? By digging deeper into it, we can get a good grasp of what really the reading process is. Good day everyone, Yana Bai here. And today we will talk about reading process, reading problems, and emergent literacy. In the internet, there are tons of published articles about reading process and its different stages or phases, like the one proposed by Dr. Jeanette Hughes of Ontario University, or the reading process that includes three phases proposed by Kylie Beers 2000, the before, during, and after reading phases. These are just some commonly known reading processes. But today, let us take a look at a different perspective. Have you ever wondered how our brains process while we read? By digging deeper into it, we can get a good grasp of what really the reading process is. In reality, we begin to read as early as kindergarten by learning the alphabets and turning those letters into sounds and working their ways into whole words. As we experience it, reading is a very long and tedious process. One of the keys in being able to read is the automatic word processing. It is basically how the brain decides a group of symbols is actually a word within milliseconds. One study published in the journal Developmental Science found that this process happens between 4th or 5th grade, but for some, the process is much longer. Another is based on a study published in the Journal of Neuroscience found that there is a small area of the brain on the left side of the visual cortex that can read words, and this part of the brain sits right next to the part that recognizes faces. So when is the best time to learn to read? Studies show that there is a crucial window between kindergarten and third grade. Research published in the journal Psychological Science found that the amount of white matter brought in the temporoparietal region during the window strongly predicted how well that kid would learn to read. And it didn't matter what their home life was or their genetic predisposition. It is just that this part of the brain is so important for things like phonological processing, speech, and reading. According to the lead researcher from Japan, Fumito Hef, Thinks that if the growth in this part of the brain do not happen at the right time, the kid could have more problems with reading. Apart from this fact, the problem with our literacy rate and reading comprehension might have more to do with the language than with our educational system or our brains. English is one of the most irregular languages. English words more often break rules than conform. So learning to read and write becomes a matter of memorizing words, which can take years. For instance, read and read mean two different things but are spelled the exact same way. Aside from this brain and language matter, based on the result of PISA 2018, high school students in the Philippines got a lower score in reading comprehension than most of the neighboring Asian countries. Based on the findings, over 80% of Filipino students around the age of 15 did not reach the minimum level of proficiency in reading. The main reason of this, according to Frederick S. Perez, is that in terms of literacy, Filipinos are really struggling due to the fact that the result of NCAT and NEET, students really do get low scores in standardized tests. And this is because of reading comprehension, literacy, and numeracy adequacy. And the proposed solution to this issue, according to Perez, is to align the teaching content and strategies. Simply because the demands of literacy and numeracy have evolved, but literacy instruction in the Philippines still stuck around narratives. Another is that we should begin from four basic elements of reading. Word recognition, vocabulary, fluency, and reading comprehension. Paris also suggested that teaching students how to read should be contextualized and regionalized given the linguistic diversity of the Philippines. And lastly, it is strongly suggested to strengthen the literacy and reading comprehension as well as working on nationwide K-12 curriculum. How about emergent literacy? What does it mean? According to Justice 2006, it is the reading and writing behaviors of young children before they become readers and writers in conventional sense. In other words, emergent literacy is the very foundation of all this. 
in order to be successful in reading process, first, we really need to develop this among our children. And what are these behaviors? Well, here are some examples of emergent literacy activities that will show these behaviors. Shared storybook reading is arguably the most common emergent literacy activity for many children. Parents read to children who are very young before they can verbally participate. Another is saying with our young ones will help expose and help them develop early phonemic awareness. Parents often engage in scaffolding or supportive behaviors during emergent literacy activities. Through scaffolding, parents adapt the experience to match the child's growing abilities. Hence, by having thorough grasp of emergent literacy to reading process, we will be able to lessen if not eliminated those identified reading problems. And that is all for today. Thank you.